through the blue sky venture capital team, we could see this whole startup economy starting to come through Queensland. And so we thought about how can we contribute to that? And what we saw was a whole bunch of fragmentation across the whole ecosystem here, whether it was universities doing bits and pieces and everyone was sort of not working together and not working from the same hymn sheet. And in this space, you really want everyone working together. It's actually quite different to most um, most industries where everyone's sort of competing. In this space, everyone's working together and it's actually more effective. So. So we saw that and we, we had a really good friendship with Josh Lerner, who's the professor of venture capital and private equity at Harvard. And he's the world export expert. And we said to Josh um, and to the premier at the time, Campbell Newman, we should just get this together. Tell us where we sit, like give us a baseline. And also Josh had said to me that there was this um, pathway that had developed over time where before 10, 20 years earlier, um, governments and economies were trying things and it was sort of experimentation but suddenly there was a sort of narrow pathway of things that actually worked and so we said well this is happening naturally so why don't we do a report on Queensland and see where we're at and Josh did that report uh, and then um, there was a change of government and the new government just saw it on the shelf and just said okay let's get that going and so that became the advanced Queensland program or part thereof and uh, and so the Premier, I introduced the Premier um, Anastasia Palaszczuk to Josh at Harvard when she was on a, on a trip. Um, he explained how this would play out. It's sort of, um, it's an interesting place for government to play because they can catalyse and not have to spend lots of money, but get a big return for society. So, uh, so anyway, out of all that, one of the recommendations that Josh had sadly was to set up this Office of Chief Entrepreneur, which had been really successful in Israel and various other places and Chile and this, and it's actually a really important sort of glue role. And, um, and so uh, this particular government decided to set that up and then put together a panel of people, um, came down to two people that they asked. Uh, the other person um, I spoke to as well and said, you should do this because I actually don't want to do this. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about slowing down. I'm quite tired from the blue sky journey. And, um, and as luck would have it with fate, um, uh, he couldn't do it at the time, but he might be able to do it in the future. And so uh, I became last man standing. Um, so it was not intentional, definitely accidental and, 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 and no regrets, like it's a, you know, it's a privilege to be able to do it and you can genuinely make a contribution. So, you know, doing it pro bono to give back. And I think after you've had um, some level of success through your working life, it's really important to give back and this is a really effective way of doing that. Queensland in the last 10 years has changed dramatically, like every other state really, uh, and every other economy, is that, that you've got people see, there's a really good expression that um, the QUT use, which is, you know, entrepreneurship, the new graduate destination. Uh, it's become a career path and people are saying, well, this is something I would like to do rather than just go through the usual internship at a law, fir law firm or, or become an accountant or whatever. They're actually seeing this as a path where they can make a difference and contribute to society and build their own wealth and all those things. So it's, it's become mo much more normal and especially in the last two or three years. Ten years ago, um, it was only, you know, it was probably those that were desperate or those that were animals that were doing it. Now the supply side is much, much stronger. Uh, I don't think that there's any excuse for anyone in Australia not to get their startup up. They talk about lack of support and all those things. There is no better place in the world than Australia. That is a weak excuse and it's a, what Alex McNabb, our CIO, calls. It's just another reasonable excuse for failure. Um, the reality is, is that there's so much support. There's so many investors. If you're any good at what you do, if your friends and family and other people trust you, they'll invest in you. If your idea is any good, you put all your own money in. Uh, there are just no excuses for failure. So what you're seeing now are these physical structures with their own culture and own ideas and own different ways of skinning things um, that are providing people with, um, I guess, a home base to kick off. And the real value of those places uh, is having a, an environment where you're not on your own. It's quite a lonely journey. Uh, and there's a lot to learn from other people. And what I didn't understand when I started uh, Blue Sky, because I didn't go through one of the big schools or anything like that, and I didn't understand the power of networks. And Tim Wilson, our head of private equity, um, bought with him a network. And I saw that work, and I've seen it, since seen it, well, we've built one, and I've seen it work for us. Um, these are sort of shortcuts to building networks and building relationships and learning stuff. I think what it does is it shortens your cycle of pain and suffering. Um, the reality is, is there is a cycle of pain and suffering. So uh, a lot of that has sprung up and I think there'll be more. And, uh, and, the, and I, I think the more the merrier. Uh, I don't think that we, I think we have, a, a, everyone just says, is there enough deal flow? Are there enough ideas? There's plenty of ideas. What's missing is not innovation and ideas. What's missing is people that are entrepreneurs and they are two different skill sets. 
I mean, you do get some people that have both, they're freaks, and they're usually, they're, they're awesome to invest into because they always find a way. Um, but, but usually it's a different skill set, and so your entrepreneurship piece, uh, that ability to find a way, that resilience, persistence, the intellect and determination to take it through, to show the commercial judgment, to win the moments, because you can, I've got an expression I used with our MD here recently, I said, look, just remember, and, you know, the next hour could set the next decade. And people don't get that, it doesn't run like spreadsheets. So all these new structures, what they do is they give people an opportunity to network more effectively, but also net networking with like-minded people and also ideally people that have actually done it. And you can't beat experience. And the reality is experience and age tend to be correlated. Um, but what this does is it gets more experience into you at a younger age, therefore uh, you can achieve more earlier on. And I think we're gonna see the benefit of that as they call that ecosystem, which is you know not an expression I like that much, but there, so it feels like a petri dish. But um, but still, you're seeing all those nodes build up, and then the connections build. And I went to the Sunshine Coast recently, and it does take time. Like you can't sort of manufacture it. It, it takes time. It's a it's a sort of a natural ecological thing to happen. And I went to the Sunshine Coast, and of all the places I've been around the state, it's the one that feels most likely to be like Boulder. Uh, smaller population, building an entirely new CBD. They've had an innovation hub there for 15 years and they've kept it going and they've stayed the course and the people that started it are still there. Those friendships and deep, net deep networks are there and it's starting to pay off. And, and so it feels like they've actually got it. Uh, that's the most likely space right now. Um, and I would say that Brisbane is heading that way, but we're a bit behind, but we can catch up because of the scale. So start, there's a thing called Startup Muster, which summarises a lot of the data, and um, Queensland's now something like, I'll get the number wrong, 21.8% of the startups in Australia and Queensland are now second behind New South Wales. So Queensland uh, is above Victoria. Um, what's interesting is that 13% um, that of that is in the city, the rest is regional. And so you're getting a much broader regional spread of entrepreneurship, which is sort of not surprising, uh, given that there are some, you know, a lot of the bigger regional cities are in Queensland and the geographic separation sort of makes you do it. There's one thing, uh, a lot of people complain about that geographic separation. That's, but you can turn that weakness into a strength. And, and my bet is, and I don't know this for sure, but I suspect, is we've found this in our own business, is that the people, because you've got to fight harder from those areas to get noticed, because you've got to fight harder in a smaller ecosystem and a smaller industry and less scale, um, that, that that resilience and determination to succeed will mean that the startups, you might not see more startups percentage wise in those towns for population, but I bet you you'll see a higher success rate. And so what those groups should do is accept their position where they are geographically and use that resilience and persistence as a strength uh, because if they make it through, they're more likely to succeed. Like the, the reality is, is that the really, really good operators will find people to mentor them and they will want to learn. Uh, so the exceptional people find a way anyway. So let's park the really exceptional ones that just would succeed in no matter where they played. Um, so what you're trying to solve for here is you're trying to turn a whole bunch of people that might make it into people that do make it. Because the ones that are going to make it, they'll find a way. They'll make it anyway. They might have a volatile experience, so, but they'll get through. And so, um, that, so the mentorship piece is uh, is incredibly important. When I think through um, uh, through the my journey of learning, I was a late starter. So I came from a rural background, a rural boarding school, no experience in the world, and backpacked around the world for the first time at 22, and had no idea about the world at all. I had studied ag science and hated it. So. So you're starting at 22 with no experience. I think most kids are getting to the point there where they're well ahead of that curve. And so how do you keep that curve going? And so I was, then I got lucky and I got a job with a, a family in Alabama who had five or six generations of experience commodity trading and worked for them for eight years. Uh, a Jewish family, wonderful people, and I just soaked up everything that they taught me. And I tested it all, the things like their theories and their rules, but they were true. So um, knowing when you're talking to someone that's giving you the truth and the source of truth, uh, even though it might be inconvenient because it's usually tough, uh, is, you know, is one of the key success factors and then remembering those moments um, and then pivoting off them as well. So making available to, um, to the startup system in Queensland and the, the scale-up because it's a, there's different things that happen to you on the way. It's not just about startups and it's not just about tech, but having those people available 
Uh, they actually are available in Queensland. There are a lot of amazing entrepreneurs in Queensland. I would argue that Queensland is the most entrepreneurial state. And so, uh, so when you grab those people, whether they be from resources, agriculture, tech, construction, doesn't matter. The experiences I'm telling you are the same for everyone. The rules are the same. So, and that, but they express it differently. So getting those people um, you know, engaged where they're giving back that knowledge and making a difference. You never know when you're gonna say one thing to one person that changes their life. I like a little thing that happened to me um, when I was doing my MBA at UQ and I was working for the same family and um, I was running an Australian operation out of, out of Toowoomba actually and doing my MBA and I was doing one subject at a time and I did um, strategy. And, and my academic record was um, you know, mixed at best. And, um, and this lecturer was from overseas, from Europe and he said to me, um, uh, he said, Mark, there's 80 people in this course and I'm gonna give you a high distinction. And I said, well, why would you do that? Because <laughs> I didn't work any harder. And then he said, um, he said, no, he said, but you're, you're connecting the dots differently to everybody else. You need to do a job that uses that ability to connect the dots because I've spoken to your other lecturer, other lecturers, and you have no other skills. <laughs> and so, as the Europeans are, they can be very straight down the line. Uh, so you need to find something that does this. Have you thought about private equity? Bang, you know, seed sign. And then two years later, I, or, sorry, four years later, I started a, a private equity fund. That's the seed, right? And so you go, oh, it's private equity. And you go and do some research. Oh, geez, that looks pretty interesting. I really like building businesses. Bang. And then the realization also that no one would give me a job in private equity. So you have to start your own company. So there's other drivers. But that's a seed sign. It was a conversation outside a door to a guy that knew what he was talking about. And he changed the course of my life. And as it turns out, everyone that works here and all the people that have invested with us and done so well and everything else, all from that one conversation. So you never know the moment that it's gonna change someone's life. And so what we're doing is we're setting up those moments and just letting them be. And, and I, think, um, I think this is, you know, there's lots of things we can do in that space that, that, that work, uh, but absolutely finding platforms to get that message through to people uh, is gonna be really important. If you think about Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley, if you've been in Silicon Valley, it's not a particularly nice place. It's like San Francisco is a beautiful place and Sand Hill Road's not. <laughs> so it's not horrible, but it's logistically removed. Um, it started because it was cheap. Um, so, but the reason that Silicon Valley is there, it, now is different, but it started because the money was there. So for the precinct, absolutely, the venture capital, investors, everything else that needs to be the hub. Precinct is the mothership. It's five and a half thousand square meters. It's already filled up, already filled up. Everyone said this won't fill up. It was easily filled up and it's got all the right groups in there and probably will have to take more space. So then out of that, you end up with this one big central piece mothership and the hub and spokes are actually already in place. So they're already there. What was missing was the was this big enormous thing in the middle and the valley's the logical place to do that. And, um, and so I, I, I think that um, I think we've got a chance to own this. Now, there's so much innovation in Queensland and um, already, um, particularly through the universities and you know, everyone's got ideas. It's, um, <laughs> we're not short of ideas. I think the future of entrepreneurship, I mean, you ha it's a bit like building um, you know, a footy team with the right culture. And so um, you know, what I'm hopeful is that if we look back in five years and only five, I think it's scaling that quickly. I don't think this is that long of a journey. So I always like a story and I like the five year plan, it's very Chinese and that you don't move it. So, um, you know, what I would like to be able to do is that when whoever the chief entrepreneur is then or the premier or whoever it might be says that, um, you know, Queensland is uh, the most entrepreneurial state, everybody accepts that to be true uh, because the evidence tells you that it is and it's something that we can uh, claim with facts and not just a myth. I think it's probably already true in, in a per capita sense. I'd like to make it in, in terms of an output sense as well. I'm gonna be myself, okay? I'm not gonna do this if I, look, I've done a lot of this stuff and I just, I'm always gonna be myself. I'm not gonna act as something that I'm not. So just let me, just let me, let, like it'll work its way through and then you can decide what, and if you don't wanna use it at the end, you don't have to use it. Okay, I don't mind, I won't be offended. So, so tell me your name.